Hey all and welcome to another scenery tutorial. In this tutorial I'll step you through the techniques used to create this great looking farm scene. I'll specifically step you through the creation of this corrugated iron shed as well as the scenery. Most of the scenery techniques I use are shown in previous tutorials and where appropriate I'll have a link to that tutorial however there are a few different techniques I use specifically on this diorama. So let's get started and make some corrugated iron. First off you'll need a way to make corrugated iron. I'm using a corrugated iron maker from Brunel Hobbies. I'll put a link in the description below. The foil I'm using is heavy duty foil. Regular foil works however is much too fragile to handle. Even the heavy duty foil needs to be handled with extreme care. The best advice I can give when working with foil is to always use a sharp knife. I can get about 30 or 40 cuts before I need to break off a new blade. When you start to use the corrugated iron maker, try not to press too hard when making the first few indentations, otherwise you'll end up cutting through the foil. A few light passes over the foil will get the job done. I also flip the piece over and make a pass on the back as well. This will help remove the curve and flatten it out better. Finally trim the sheets down to the desired size. Mine measure 2cm by 1cm. You may need to run the sheets through a final time after trimming them down to size to restore some of the detail that was lost after cutting them. This next step is optional and it can be quite harmful without the proper protection. Gloves and a mask are essential. This is ferric chloride and it's a chemical used for etching PCB boards. It's highly corrosive and will burn skin. It does a great job of simulating rusted out corrugated iron sheets as you will see. This stuff gets extremely hot when mixing it as well. All it needs is a little water and you can vary the strength by mixing in more or less powder. It doesn't take long to start working and once it starts to bubble take out the foil, dip it in water and leave it to dry on the paper towel. I ended up doing this to about 25% of the foil sheets. Don't leave the foil in the solution for too long or this is what will happen. The last little bit of preparation for the corrugated sheets is to paint and weather them. On their own the foil is too shiny and needs a little dulling down to look more realistic. This is achieved by painting them. You'll need to spray them as hand painting doesn't really work all that well. You can use acrylic spray paint cans or as I'm using here an airbrush. Either way yields great results. The airbrush however has more flexibility and variety in colour. Just remember to paint both sides if your building can be viewed on the inside like mine. As for colour I'm using a mix of Vallejo air colours shown here. And I paint all the sheets including the ones weathered by the ferric chloride. The structure of the shed is made from strip wood. I had no plans for the structure, I simply drew something on a piece of paper and started gluing wood together. I got ideas for the structure by looking at photos on Google and went from there. SuperTac glue was used to glue the structure together, but before assembling the shed I prepared the strip wood. You can see here small pieces of fuzz on the piece of wood, and to remove them I passed it through some steel wool, and the difference is quite dramatic. To stain the wood and give it that old feel, I used India ink. You don't need that much for this to work, I only used four drops in a small amount of water and painted it over the assembled structure. The support beams are a couple of twigs from the backyard cut to size and lightly sanded. And now for the most time consuming part, installing the corrugated iron. Good thing this is a small shed. It takes a massive amount of patience and concentration and a gentle touch but if you just take it one step at a time you'll have the shed covered before you know it. 
I did this over a couple of days. Just remember to make sure whenever you cut the foil, use a sharp blade. A blunt blade will certainly destroy your hard work. With the shed complete, we can now move on to scenery that will highlight this small masterpiece. Like with nearly all my scenery dioramas, I start by planning and then building up the landform with Sculptor Mold. I have a large flat area that needs to be smooth, so using some plaster of Paris, I cover the area and fill in any dents or holes, and once dry I can sand it back and get a nice smooth finish. The base gets a liberal coating of an earth coloured paint and before it dries I cover the area with my dirt texture sifted through a stocking. The paint acts like a glue and holds the base layer in place. However this is not enough on its own, so I'll go over it with the alcohol and scenic glue to further fix it in place. Next it's a matter of placing the buildings and objects and mark out their positions so you don't apply scenery where you want buildings. These 6mm homemade static grass tufts do a good job and I further blend them into the diorama by randomly applying 2mm static grass around them. Additional ground cover is made up using a variety of Woodland Scenics ground foam as well as some brown sand, some leaves and bark I put through a blender and more of my dirt texture. I try to use dull colours like burnt grass and earth blend from Woodland Scenics. The static grass is made up using beige and late fall colours. Once that's done, seal it all in place with alcohol and scenic glue. The real transformation comes with trees. I've got a variety of trees here, most are my cheap realistic trees for which I have a tutorial on here. And I also have a couple of the Woodland Scenics tree armatures where I have another tutorial here for adding realistic details. A small hole and some Mod Podge is all that's needed to fix them into position. For smaller shrubs and bushes, I use Woodland Scenics Fine Leaf Foliage. This chain link fence is from one of my earlier tutorials. It's very easy to make and looks fantastic. Check out the link here to go and have a look. We're almost finished, next I'll place the shed and fix it in position with a very small amount of glue. I want to be able to eventually remove it without damaging it, so only a small amount of glue is needed. And I'll also glue this small shed here on the side. For a tutorial on making this shed, check here. And finally I'll highlight the driveway by dusting over some raw sienna pastels. I'm using a dry brush and randomly spreading it around. I try to have thicker spots to show tire marks and drag lines. That completes this diorama. The results are quite good and look even better given the opportunity to stand back and absorb the scene as a whole. Don't forget to check out BoulderCreekRailroad.com where I regularly post new content like these videos and modelling articles, as well as news and progress on different projects. Cheers and thanks for watching.